Okay, you guys are already comfortable with that sign and that sign, less than and greater than. You already know what those mean. Now, the problem is, on that last worksheet, the one that you guys did about the guy changing the light bulb on the top of the Empire State Building, Yes, I know. When you did that, what did you notice about the questions? I'll show you the page that I mean. What do you notice about all of these questions? I'm going to highlight what I'm th talking about. There's different words. Thank you, Sam. And those different words all meant the same things. What did they mean? They mean they meant math. Abstract, multiply, divide, right? Okay. So we come back to today's stuff. Less than, you know what that means. But there's other words in math and in English that discuss things that are smaller, yes? Can any of you think of a word that would be a synonym for less than? It would mean the same thing as less than. I'll go back. Diminished. Nice. What's another one? Decreased. Oh, look at that. Two that we had right on the sheet. But you're absolutely right. You guys got to be able to understand what all these words mean, right? So anywhere in here, we're just going to write a couple of other words. Decreased. Diminished. Any word like that that means what? It means they got smaller. Cool? Cool. Everybody with me? Now you guys are smart kids. If less than is that, what's greater than? Uh, increased. increased. Or, what's some other words that could mean that? Bigger. Bigger. And many other words, yes? All right, now, these symbols might very well be new to you. You may not have seen those in your math journey, but it is explained right here. That symbol just means less than or equal to, okay? Now, these ones cause a lot of trouble because kids don't really get what I'm talking about. Okay, if something is less than or equal to, what does that mean? Can you think of an English word? It's one word that means less than or equal to. And I'll give you an example. How many of you have gone to McDonald's with a playground with a little sister, cousin, brother, something like that? Okay. What is written on the sign just outside the playground? Take off your shoes is one thing. Is there anything else? A driving sign. What do you mean? Oh, I see what you mean. No, 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 no. Are you allowed in the playground at McDonald's? Why? Age and size, right? So the sign of McDonald's says you have to be less than four feet to go into the playground. Less than four feet. Or equal to four feet. I'm five foot eight. Can I go in the playground? Why? I'm too tall. I'm past the maximum, aren't I? So less than or equal to 
is a maximum, which is weird because less than usually means smaller, right? But maximum is the biggest thing you can be. Is everybody with me on that? And there's lots of examples of that, isn't there? Right? I'm also too old. I'll give you guys another one in a second. When we do greater than. If less than is a maximum, then what's greater than? A minimum. And I'll give you an example of that right now. Can any of you drive? No. Are any of you allowed to drive? Why? Because you're too young. You're under the minimum. To drive, you must be what? 16 or older. So you must be greater than or equal to 16. Everybody cool? Now it sounds weird, doesn't it? To say greater than is a minimum. Does everybody understand that? Because greater than means bigger, but we're talking about the smallest thing you're allowed to be. Got it? I'll give you another example. When you guys were in like grade three and your big brother went on the roller coaster at Playland, you were like, I can't wait, man. And you walked up there and you stood by the little stick and you weren't tall enough. And then you went in your tiptoes thinking you were smarter than the guy running the ride. And he was like, uh, no, get out of here. And then your dad took you to the bathroom and he rolled up a bunch of paper towels and put them in your shoe and made you walk back like you were on high heels. Did your dad do that to you? No. I did that to my son at Disneyland. Still didn't fool them. I was trying to get my son on the California Dream and roller coaster, the one that looks like Mickey's head. Yeah. Couldn't get him on there. He had so much te- tele- or so much... Uh, paper towel in his shoes. He was walking like this. He had like that much foot in his shoe. The guy didn't believe us. <coughs> no, he was too short. Still? No, now he is, but we haven't. Yeah, yeah. We couldn't quite get him up tall enough. We got him real close, and the guy's like, "Come on." They wouldn't let him on the big roller coaster at Knott's Berry Farm either. One guy let him on the Indiana Jones ride, and then we went around the loop and went to go on in the second time because we were doing the parent handoff thing. And in that time, the guy switched, and they weren't going to let him on the second time. And I I was like, dude, he just came out of the exit. The guy right before you let him on. Yeah, but... I'm like, dude, come on. He just got off the ride. All right. That was the only time at Disneyland in five days that anybody said no to me, no matter what I asked. I think those Disneyland kids are trained to answer every question without saying the word no, even when the answer is no, except that one kid. I think he probably got fired. I'm just kidding. He didn't. I got someone fired at Disneyland last year. Fine. My, my, uh, like, I had this Lightning McQueen Croc thing, like, you know, like the, the shoes. Um, I had one and I was like hanging off the edge of where the California stream was and it was like, like, on, like, it was on and then my shoe fell off on the bridge and hit one of the power controls and I, I, not lying at all. And the, one of the guys came, like one of the clear guys came with a, um, uh, you know like, the garbage know, claws. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. And he, he tried to grab it and he hit part of the thing and it shut down the California stream and then the, I think three other people came and they all said that that guy got fired. It was probably bad. So we like talking about it uh, with the guys and he wasn't fired, but like I still got mm. fired. But he was generous enough to do it. All right. Thank you, Sam. Here is a limit, right? What does that mean? in math class. Is that a maximum or a minimum? Or is it a greater than or a less than? This is a maximum. Because that says that your maximum speed is 60. Which means your speed must be what compared to 60? Greater, less, 
Greater and equal or less than and equal? Less than and equal. Less than or equal to what? 60. Everybody got it? Now this next one I screwed up and this was the example I actually just used so you should be able to write it. You must be at least 16 year olds, 16 years old to get a driver's license. At least. Is that a minimum or a maximum? That's a minimum. So your age must be what? Less than, greater than, less than and equal to or greater than and equal to? Greater than or equal to what? 16. Because when you're 16, you can get a license, right? Can you get your license when you're 15 years old and 364 out of 365 days? No, you can't. No, you can get a learner's. You cannot get a license. Can you? At 15 and 364 out of 365? No. Can you at 16 and 1 out of 365 of your next year? Yes. Because apparently when you go to sleep when you're 15 and you wake up when you're 16, you're mature enough to have a motor, uh, have a motor vehicle when you go overnight, apparently. Huh? Not in BC. Not in BC. All right, so everybody's good with this? Okay, so you guys do these two. Put the correct symbol in both blank. Read the question and see if you can figure it out. All you got to do is put in one of the four symbols. The important thing to recognize is this statement right here that says T is the temperature. So this is written at, this would be read in English as temperature is, then I'm going to leave the blank, zero. How are you going to read that? What arrow goes in this blank. What is it, Kian? Less than. Absolutely right. When temperatures are less than zero, you make sure you wear warm clothing. Unless you're a teenager, then you show up in shorts and a t-shirt and complain about how cold it is. Don't worry, when you graduate, you're allowed to wear gloves and toques and jackets. It's okay. What about this one? The highest temperature we've had this week was 12 degrees. The highest temperature we've had. Is that a minimum, a maximum, a greater than, or a less than? It's a maximum. So what sign is going in there? Less than or equal to? Can everybody do the theory behind this? Yeah? Okay. Let's move it along. Is each number of the inequality a solution to the inequality x is less than or equal to 3? First of all, I have to decide what does that mean. Here is what that means. I'm going to highlight the thing that we need to discuss. Less than or equal to 3, right? How do I know how to read that? How do I know in English that that is x is less than or equal to 3? Some number. Some number is x, right? So this is some number that is what? Less than or equal to So where do those numbers that are less than 3 live on a number line? Left. So if I draw a number line, there's 3. Where are all the numbers that are less than 3? Where do they live on the number line, Ethan? Left or right? Number line only goes in two directions. Left. So any number that's down here 
will be the right one of the right answers, yes? How far does the number line go to the left? Negative infinity. So how many answers are there for x is less than negative 3? Infinite answers. So is 5 to the left of 3? Where's 5? It's going to be way over here somewhere, isn't it? There's 5. So is 5 one of our possible infinite answers? No, because it's to the right of 3. Is 3 allowed? Which is it, Kian? Why? Because it says equal to. So 3 is okay. What about 0? Yeah, 0 is okay. What about negative 2? Yes. Negative 2 is okay. Why? Because 3 equals 3. And I had to be less than or equal to 3. 0 is left of 3. Negative 2 is left of 3. And it will go on forever. How far? Infinity. Everybody good? Okay. I think you're liars. Let's check. Read this question. Is 8 a solution to that inequality? So first thing you have to do is read that inequality so you know what you're doing. What does that mean in English? X is what? Greater than, less than, greater than, equal to, or less than, equal to? Greater than 0. Okay. So now... I got to think in English, some number that's greater than zero. Where's zero on the number line? Right there. Where's eight? Right there. Eight is to the right of zero, so eight is or isn't a solution. Is, because it's greater than zero, because it's to the right. Now listen to me and listen to me closely. How many numbers are there that are a solution to this. On this number line, there's 10, because this number line ends, doesn't it? What if I did this? Now how many are there? Infinite. Good job, Kian. Now let me ask you this. How many not just numbers are there on this number line? What do you mean, Mr. Myers? Is there other ways we use to write values of things? Do I use decimals? Do I use fractions? So, how many decimals and fractions live between 0 and 10? Which is where this number line ends. Infinity, right? So, everything can go there. Can I put this? 1.7. Why? Because there's 1, there's 2, 1 1.7's right around there, yeah? Is it to the right of 0? So am I okay? Can I put 5 and 3 quarters? Why, Kian? Because there's 5, there's 6, there's 5 and 3 quarters, right? Everybody cool? Can I put 0 0.00001? Yes or no? Yes. Which is it, Sam? Yes, yes I can. Why? Because it's, because it's a very, very, very tiny, tiny bit past zero, isn't it? Here's the toughest question I'm going to ask you for this question. Can I put zero? Yes. Uh, no, Why not, Kian? Because it doesn't say equal to zero. It says greater than zero. So zero wouldn't be allowed. Is everybody good? Yeah? Everyone's good? Okay. So now... Let's take this and show you what we're going to do here. 
What does this mean in English? We've just done it with X. I've changed the letter now. You guys always get mad. I can't do it anymore. The letter's different. That's a load of horse crap. So what does this actually mean in English? Some number, some number greater than zero, yes? So how would you draw that on a number line? We just did it. We draw a number line. What's the only number that matters on this number line? Why? Right. So I'm going to put zero here. Where is greater than zero? To the right. So I would draw this arrow. And that arrow would go on to where? Infinity. Everybody cool? Everyone agrees that that's what that would look like, yeah? All right. Now, down here with a red line, I need to graph this. What does this say in English? Some number less than less than or equal to zero. So I'm going to draw my number line. What's the only number that matters? Zero. Where is less than zero? Left. Does everyone agree with that's what that line should look like? Does everyone agree? Okay, now here's the problem. Where does zero go? Green line or red line? My number, my number equals zero. Which line does it get to be on? Why the red line? Because the red line has the less than or equal to, right? But how do you know which line it is? Math guys have invented a way to do it. This is what they do. On a line that is greater than, because remember, is 0. 0.00001 allowed on this line? It is. But zero isn't allowed, is it? So it gets up so close to zero that it almost touches zero, doesn't it? But does it ever actually touch zero? No. So we draw an open circle around zero. Does everybody see that? We do not color it in. That means it gets close to, but never touches zero. What do you think we do here where it does touch zero? We fill it in. We color the dot. Is everybody cool with that? This is when it does not include. And this is when it does include. Does everybody get that? Yeah? Okay. So I want you to graph each of these and then write three numbers that are solutions. But be careful. I want you to only do A and B first. We'll do, I'll do A and B and I'll do A in blue and B in red. You guys obviously don't have more than one color. You're going to make two number lines right now using these rules that I just gave you and see if you can do it right. Okay? So we start the same way. We draw a number line. And what's the only number that matters in A? Five. Five. And what's the only number that matters in B? Negative one. Then you put your arrow on it. So you've got to decide what this means in English. Some number that is what? Greater than five. Greater than goes in what direction? To the right. So I need to draw this way, yes? Now I have to decide, is five included? Why? Right. So what do we do if five is included? Is not included? What kind of dot? Yeah, what we call an open dot. Because it's not colored in. Okay? 
Steven, I understand you feel you know how to do this, but I also watch you ask Miss Lloyd for help when it's quiz time, which means you don't really know how to do this stuff, so you should write it down. Okay? The day that I give you a quiz and not one person puts their hand up to ask me, Somme, or Miss Lloyd a question is the day I will allow you guys not to write notes. And since that has not happened even once since the beginning of September, everybody writes the notes every day. Got it? Unless you can find some other way to get it into your head. What about this one? What does that say in English? Less than or equal to one. Negative one. So I go to negative one, which way does the arrow go? Left. Is negative one included? So what do I do? What we call a closed dot. We color it in. Is everybody good with that? Yeah? Okay. Now, this has changed slightly, isn't it? Because how do we read? Left to right, yeah? So what is this in English? Read that to me in English. Start on the left. What's the first thing you see? Negative four. What does that symbol mean? Is greater than or equal to some number. So now try and graph that for me. I'm going to wait a second while you look at it. Does the beginning of my graph change at all? I need a line and what's the only number on it that matters? Negative four. Now, where does my arrow go? Ethan says it goes to the right. I'm going to draw that. So that would mean all these numbers are answers, aren't they? Okay. So give me some number that lives over here to the right of negative four. You could do negative two, okay? So that would mean this would be negative four, negative two. Is negative four greater than negative two? No. So what happened to our arrow? It has to go that way. Why? What is different in how that's written and how that's written? You have to know what these say in English, right? Because once you read it in English, negative four is greater than the numbers, which means negative four must be a maximum, yes? So I have to go left. Now, what kind of dot do I put there? Open or closed? Equal to. So it is a closed dot. Because negative four is allowed. And in green, what's this one going to look like? There's my line. What's the only number that matters? Negative one. Is it negative one going to be included? No. Nope. So it's an open dot. Which way does the arrow go? Left or right? To the right. Because this says negative one is less than some number. So all those numbers must be greater than negative one. Now here's the shortcut. Letter first, the graph follows the sign. Okay? Please notice, B was first, the arrow went to the right, greater than. Y was first, the arrow went to the left, less than. Number first,
the graph reverses. Why? Because of the way it reads in English. Everybody cool? Now I'm going to add one more thing to this that is a little bit tricky. Negative 4 is greater than n. So that means that n is less than or equal to negative 4. You can reverse the order, but then you reverse the sign. So what is the other way I can write this? This says negative 1 is less than r. So what happens if I put r first? Greater than negative 1. Is everybody cool? Makes sense, right? As soon as you read it to yourself in English, it makes sense. Ethan wanted to draw the arrow to the right because the arrow was pointing to the right. But as soon as you read that in English, you said without me telling you, oh, oh. right? Okay. So let's see if you really get it. Graph that for me. What's the only number that matters in this question right here? What's, oh, crap. What's the only number that matters on that number line? Four. We got to put a dot at four, don't we, Haiti? Yeah. What kind of dot? Open, which is just a circle, or closed, which is colored in? Closed. Why? It's equal to four. So I got to put a colored in dot there. Now, this says all the numbers that I care about, H, all those numbers are less than four. So which way does the arrow go? Left or right? Left. Now let's say you're bad at reading this. What's the shortcut trick I gave you? Is the letter first? So the graph follows the sign, right? So I go left. Now, tell me three correct answers. What are three numbers that that arrow goes over? Kian. Three, two, one. And zero, and negative one, and negative two, and negative three, and negative 7.1, and right? How many answers could I, how many little lines could I draw there? Infinite. And they would all be correct as long as this line goes over them. Now let's look at our next one. What's the only number on this line that matters? Negative three. But this line isn't labeled. Who labels the graph? You do. Does it matter where you put the negative three? Nope. So I'm going to put my negative 3 right there, right almost in the middle. I got to put a dot at negative 3, don't I? What kind of dot? Open or closed? Why? Because it's greater than negative 3. Open dot. Which way does the arrow go? To the right. Because this says negative 3 is less than some number, which means that some number is greater than negative three. If you can't remember that, what's the shortcut? Number first, so I reverse the sign. What are three numbers that can go there? This is harder because it's not labeled for you. So what numbers live on this side of negative three? Negative 4 lives to the right of negative 3. Negative 2. Negative 1. 0. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And so on. Until when? Infinity. How many lines could I draw here? Infinite. Could I have fractions? Could I have decimals? Could I have square roots? Could I have squares? Yeah. Everybody with me? Everyone is good? Okay. You have 10 minutes, which isn't a lot of time, but you guys wasted a lot of time in the warm-up. You will be working on...
page. Can't remember. Somewhere around page 220. Excuse me. I lie. I am the worst kind of liar. Page 245. And that is it. It is all on one page. It's one page and you got 10 minutes. I bet that's enough time to get it done. 245. Page that says practice. That whole page. 